Hi, this is Josh, pharmacist with Pharmacist Tips, here to talk to you about ibuprofen, the medication ibuprofen. We're going to discuss some of the uses, uh, common dosages, as well as side effects that can be experienced with this medication. Let's look at a little overview of ibuprofen to get started. In the U.S., it's sold under the brand names Advil and Motrin. You'll also find it under many store brand generics. It is an anti-inflammatory, or what we call a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, abbreviated NSAID. It's used to treat pain, inflammation, and fever. Over-the-counter doses as well as prescription doses are available. Common side effects can include fluid retention, rash, stomach pain, nausea, dizziness, ringing in the ears. Uh, people with cardiovascular disease, GI disease, uh, so ulcers, any intestinal issues, stomach issues, impaired kidneys, liver disease, or bleeding disorders should avoid the use of ibuprofen. For the rest of the video, we'll go into a little more details on ibuprofen, discussing some of the common uses. We'll discuss how it works, uh, cautions, as well as some common drug interactions that can occur. We'll look at dosing, both for over-the-counter as well as prescription dosing. Discuss ibuprofen and alcohol. We'll discuss some of the side effects and what we can do to reduce the risk of those side effects. So what is ibuprofen used for? Um, and of course, we talked about that it's used for inflammation and pain. So we see it used for arthritis, menstrual pain, fever, gout. Gout is what's considered off-label. It wasn't approved for that, but it can be used for that. may not be the first uh, NSAID that is reached for when someone has gout, but it can be used for that. We can see it used in migraines, dental pain, uh, other types of headaches, sprains, strains, overexertion pain. We all have had that when we uh, overdo our physical activity and the next day we're sore. It's often used for that. Sore throat, backache, cold and flu pain, and other uses as your healthcare provider may determine is necessary. So how does ibuprofen work? It works by blocking cyclooxygenase 1 and 2 enzymes, often abbreviated COX-1 and COX-2. Um, when we block those, it decreases the production of what are called prostaglandin precursors. And those prostaglandins are responsible for the pain and inflammation that occurs in the body. So by blocking the enzyme, we reduce the pain and inflammation. For over-the-counter dosing, of course, you'll want to follow the instructions with the ibuprofen that you purchased, but it's generally one tablet every four to six hours. If the symptoms continue, two tablets can be used. It's recommended not to exceed six tablets in 24 hours unless your doctor has recommended that you take a higher dose. And ibuprofen is always going to be best with food or milk to reduce stomach upset. Another thing to keep in mind, if you need to take it for more than a week, or so you, you want to check in with a health care provider just to make sure there is nothing more serious going on. Prescription dosing on the other hand it's going to vary greatly of course it's going to depend what they're treating the severity of symptoms and that will help the prescriber determine the appropriate dose to use. There is a large variety of doses available it is um, of course the over-the-counter is the 200 and then it's also available 400, 600, and 800 milligram tablets. There are various um, liquid preparations available as well. But typically we're going to see it dosed at 2 to 400 milligrams every 4 to 6 hours when needed or the higher dose 6 to 800 every 6 to 8 hours as needed. Generally um, maximum it depends on the condition and your risk factors but anywhere from 2,400 to 3,200 milligrams per day. And again remember ibuprofen is best taken with food or milk to reduce the upset, the stomach upset. So what about side effects? We touched on that a little bit with the introduction slide. Of course, um, we can see some swelling and fluid retention, itchiness and rash, stomach pain. That's why we're taking it with food to help reduce the chance of that. Uh, heartburn, nausea, dizziness, again, ringing in the ears. Typically, the side effects we see less common is it can increase blood pressure. Uh, we can have some heart changes, uh, hair loss, ulcers, hearing loss, reduced kidney function, as well as others. And so again, I briefly touched on the intro slide as to the cautions of ibuprofen, and certain people should avoid using ibuprofen and NSAIDs in general, as it can increase the risk of heart attack and stroke, and that is going to depend on your underlying risk before you start the medication. It can increase blood pressure, 
So it's a good idea to monitor blood pressure when you're on ibuprofen. It can also increase the risk of bleeding in the stomach and the intestines. It can affect liver function, and it can increase the risk of kidney problems. Alcohol and ibuprofen. It is best to avoid them. Alcohol and ibuprofen together can increase the risk of bleeding in the stomach or in the intestines, which can be a very serious condition. Of course, the risk is going to depend on how often you're taking the ibuprofen, how long you've been taking ibuprofen, as well as how much alcohol you're consuming. So that would be something you could certainly discuss with your healthcare provider to determine whether it's appropriate for you, but it is best to avoid the two together. Drug interactions, uh, the things we really want to watch for are diuretics. So those are what most people refer to as water pills or fluid pills that those work through the kidney. Ibuprofen can affect the kidney. So it is recommended if you're taking a water pill not to use ibuprofen. If you must use it, you want to use it under your health care provider's supervision to watch for side effects. SSRIs are common antidepressants that we see like fluoxetine, citalopram, escitalopram, paroxetine. Those, along with ibuprofen, increase the risk of bleeding. So it is recommended that NSAIDs not be used with SSRIs. Um, on occasion, we can see them used together, but again, something you'd want to talk to your healthcare provider about to determine your risk of side effects from using the two together. You don't want any unexpected bleeding to occur. Blood pressure medications. Again, this goes back to that risk of heart problems and increase in blood pressure. So if you're taking blood pressure medications and ibuprofen, you want to make sure you're monitoring your blood pressure. Make sure your healthcare provider is aware that you're using the medication and they can help you determine whether it's appropriate to continue using them. Anticoagulants, anything that affects clotting or bleeding in the body, uh, since ibuprofen can increase the risk of unexpected bleeding in the stomach and intestines, we always want to be cautious if we're using it with those items. Of course, we don't want to use it with other NSAIDs. Um, ibuprofen is not the only non steroidal anti inflammatory out there. Naproxen is another very popular one, it's sold under the brand name Aleve in the US. Uh, it's recommended you not use methotrexate with the ibuprofen, as that can increase the methotrexate to dangerous levels. And of course, there are other drug interactions that can occur. I just touched on some of the major ones. You always want to speak to your doctor or pharmacist to ensure the medications that you're using are safe to be used together. So what can we do to reduce the risk of uh, ibuprofen? Well, of course, we can use the lowest dose for the shortest period of time. We don't want to take the medication uh, for any longer than we need, and we don't want to take a higher dose than necessary. You can switch to a different NSAID. So again, um, you can talk to your healthcare provider. Maybe there is one that um, would be better suited for you, depending on your pre-existing health conditions. There are also topical anti-inflammatories, uh, brand name Volterra gel or a Totalac gel that does not absorb into the body like the oral tablets do. May be an option. It's, not, of course, not going to work for every type of pain, or you may have to switch to a different class of medications altogether. You can also taking a PPI, a proton pump inhibitor, like omeprazole or pentoprazole. Those reduce the stomach acid produced in the stomach and can reduce the risk of ulcers when you're using ibuprofen. And of course, we always want to monitor for side effects. See your healthcare provider on a regular basis. Watch your blood pressure. Um, the sooner we notice that you're having a side effect and can stop the medication, the less likely for long-lasting harm. As always, I appreciate you watching my videos. I appreciate it if you'd like this video and subscribe to my channel. Do remember, these are only uh, informational purposes only and not intended to serve as a replacement for your healthcare provider. Thanks again for watching.